Yesterday we saw some change-ups. This is a map that they've, they've struggled on on day one, successful on on day two, but only just, and now they play it with probably their toughest opponent on day three. They're getting better on it. That, that's the yep. good news here. The problem is Cash was SK's pick. This is where Astralis want to be playing. They're very, very good on this. Their B bomb side is uh, absolute strong arms yep. there. They're not going to be l allowing them to actually get into that bomb side easy. That's why SK try to find most of their rounds, a lot of execution sort of area, lots of contact plays there. And the B bomb side, especially for the CT side of SK, that's been a problem in the past as well. They started to get better though. Yesterday we saw it. They have made adjustments here, but let's get into this one, ladies and gentlemen. Second map of the best of three. Loser goes home, and the winner goes on to see Optic in the grand finals. It will be SK on the CD side here. Good news for them. We do say they want to start on those easier sides. It certainly is a CD sided map overall. Four sets of armor for Astralis. One smoke in the hand of Glaive. He's got a flashbang as well. As we get into this one, nothing really given away so far. Astralis have got connect control. Three players towards that position. Is flushing out these hallways and making sure no CT confrontation will be coming in. No real aggression from the CTs at all. They have one player towards long. That's fur. And someone in the middle as well. That was Fallen holding off these initial encounters. And Fur did make contact with the Vice far out, but backs away smartly because they'd already made their way inside Bath. Oh. Fallen made that call. He would have been left sitting out at long. Either way, he gets taken down to free from far. Smoke off from Fallen. He's got the kit smoke. He's used it already. He's got the headshot so there's no armor and he gets punched around. He's picked up two. Bomb's gonna go down quite quickly. They're not gonna go for the default plant because of the rotation. Good boost at the fence as well. Denies, to, excuse me, Zipix. The chance of trying to plant right away, but having taken down the back lines, pushing them back, they're gonna be able to confidently put that down now with bathroom control. So Cold, next one to come up the line from Bank. Gets there just too late to catch off Zipix, who's now gonna smoke himself off out toward Long. I take that back, actually. It was just a decoy going down. Either way. Fox is going to try and find the information first. They picked up the kit that Fallen dropped, so a bit of a chance to try and play this out a little bit longer. Tries to tap, doesn't quite get that far, but they've got to get kills before you can commit to it. They're not finding them. Now they are tackled. Only the one, though. Fox will hunt down a low HP on Zipix, but struggles to get the shots in time and has to go for the reload. This buys more opportunity for Astralis. That said, can be tagged up. If he finds this next kill, gets it down to a one-on-one. -on -one. He's pretty much going to get on it, commit to it, just hold it. That's luck. If he finds it, not going to happen. He tries to go for the crowd just to throw off the hitbox, but Glaive is there. Yeah, it's an impossible situation there. The only chance he's got is going for the full defuse, and at that point, if Davis gets him off the bomb, the round's over. So, very easy 1v1 there. It does come down to the 1v1, which is, I guess, better than it could have been. They actually went down to a 5 and 3 while the bomb was planted there. Quite quick stuff from Astralis. Default to kick things off. Played out the connector as well. Got some long control, pushed the CDs back. It was fur challenging towards long, as you said, and he got a completely wrecked at the start there. Pushing through their own smoke, Astralis managed to find Fallen. A site completely overwhelmed at that point, and it's going to be an almost impossible round for SK. The fact they found so many kills is actually pretty beneficial. They will be sort of forcing up in the second round. We've got a scout for Fallen, some Deagles, some body armor as well, a couple of flashbangs of Dupree. Looking to shut them down nice and early. Good work from him towards Shaw as he finds Sacco. And Kiabi, he's charming in as well. Five on three, just like that. Kiabi with that shot. Now go back over toward Monster. Oh, it's takes up two. It was down before he can convert either into kills. It does benefit the pistols, but there's only two of them left, and right now only one of them inside the B site. Rotation coming over toward the window from Fur. But even so still, they can slow it down tremendously. A minute 16. I had, a mo I had a moment to swap. Okay, this might get a little bit interesting here. I won't finish the point just yet. There we go. So I had a, a chance to catch up with the guys outside. So I was kind of interested. You know those mid-round calls we had in the 2v2s yes. before? I was kind of interested to say, like, is that Glaive calling for you guys um, in those sort of situations? And it is. When, even when he's dead, he's telling them exactly what to do. So that kind of shows you the kind of influence he has on this team and the control he has. There was such intelligent mid-round calls he was making. So I just was very interested to see whether it was him and actually him controlling the team or not. So that's actually quite cool just to think like he's actually so involved in the team. Normally when an in-game leader dies, they normally just be quiet at that point, but he's actually invested throughout the round. He's dead. Shot from Fur. As we mentioned, the tag on Zipix could now be beneficial to the pistols. Guns down where you can, but that's not going to happen any further. They do get the bomb fight after the round, so a little bit of injection toward Glaive, but either way, it's going to be Astralis with two, and SK without weapons. They've got to sit a little bit longer. We have to analyze this CT side, because that's the issue that they've had in the most part. The rotations in day one were very off. We talked about the lack of coordination on the B side, in particular when Dignitas beat them up on it. Yeah, it was like the synergy, I think was the operative word I was using there. It didn't seem to be playing off each other. It's two like, separate situations going on. The flashbangs weren't really there. They didn't have really a lot of timings going on. Nothing aggressive at all. They were quite just flat in that position. This is a full EK now for SK. They will be going towards the connect position. This can be relatively successful, you know. It's a real tight choke point. You don't really want to go there on these anti You just want to go so much towards long when you've got the rifles, etc. And there it is. Device with the MAC-10. It'll just be farming money for days here with this MAC-10. Buying three kills. 
And that's going to be the round over at this point. It's going to be far. With Tacos all pushing towards the Zipex, watching the flanks. And he finds one kill on Dupree to finish things off. 3 0. And it's going to be a great start for Astralis here on the T side. We really wanted SK to win the pistol on this one. We know it's a weaker map for them. They do get the AWP in the hands of Fallen. He must have been dropped that scout before. So he gets an all out. No head armor, not a big deal against these AK 47. So that's fine. It will be Device actually upgrading to the AWP. I assume he threw his. Max and away after farming so much money, which makes sense. Like, we love the bonus round, but you want to be make sure you actually convincingly winning rounds going forward in device. He's such a strong AWP player. You want him to have this weapon in hand. And smartly so, because Fallen's going to have his on the other side of the map. And Fallen already getting quite aggressive out toward Long as he so often does. Not playing the flower pot this time, but forward to the bathroom connection point. Meanwhile, fast play toward construction for Kirby and Dupree. They want to take over some map control, and Kirby's going to get up close. Similar to what Get Right tends to do with NIP. Try and play off sound cues. He'll leave. Dupree will take over that role instead. So they can sit just on that ledge up close inside construction and hear anything going on inside of the site. Any rotations get a chance to try and spot out the positions before, or they hear out the positions before they go inside of the site. But that'll slow things off, and no one's gone over to find Fallen's AWP. This is also one of the calls we have to talk about because they were playing more of a single op setup on day one. Given the economy, they couldn't get the second op out onto Fox. But Fallen was making most of his plays over toward A. As soon as they rotated over to B, it was MSL on Dignitas that called it and went back toward the A set. So they've got to be very ahead of the play with SK side, and especially with the weapons. Nothing really inflicted just yet. As far as I was looking at that, we ending up towards the B site of an execution. With the smokes being lined up as well, you normally want to smoke the bomb site heaven and the CT entrance as well. You molotov towards barrels and then try and get in as quickly as you can and overwhelm the CT's cold zera. It was normally Fox playing this position on the first day. They have adjusted things. There's the Molotov has to flush out Hacker. He's got to run through an absolute gauntlet there. He goes on the 7 HP. Very well placed Molotovs. Oh, very well placed flash though, but everyone's blinded up and Cold's got the backs turned to him when he gets his vision back. It's two for him. On up the moss, finding a third potentially, but Zipix is there with an AK. Scarby walks in, swaps himself. In reverse, because he doesn't want anyone to flank back down from mid connector. It's him and his teammates trying to still get a bomb plant down, and Zipix will run through and do exactly that. Device will set the op toward Taco's position. Smart shot from Fox. This will give Fallen some room as well, because down to just two, make it one. Device is pitched in. Fallen's getting ever closer. He's got a peek. It does, but at the exact moment he goes away, it doesn't see him, and Fallen lines it up. They've got the retake. Very successful from SK. Yeah. And a good read. I mean, Taco loves to play those barrels, but. The flash comes through and Cole just rips them apart. Yeah, the flashes look like they actually got Astralis there at the same time. So Taco, he actually has an absolute wall of fire to run through. He goes under 7 HP. It's Cole's error. Almost gifted. You can see the flashes come in and you can see that they're flashed with the, their own devices at that point. And it's going to be Cole's error. He comes on blind and finds two in front of him. That's the difference maker. Probably can't believe what happened there, but he'll take it all day long. And a double orb setup comes in for SK at this point. Astralis so still have a lot of money. They can buy the AWP once more. It was a decent approach, but the execution was almost perfect as those flashbangs not really working out too well for them. They're going to round number five now. Not so much full reset potential, but it won't be a pretty buy if SK were to lose this round. So the double orb setup as well. Let's see what they bring to the table. Presumably something a little bit more aggressive. Want to try and get that first pick. Have an open B and then Fallen being a little bit more dynamic. Fallen's oh, going to go to the same position he was last round with this AWP on A, but no one was there to face him off. Interestingly enough, it's called Zero. The second one who's going to peek out towards short right now. We know he likes to be aggressive. Indeed. We did discuss for Fox being the secondary orper, but Caldera picks it up and he fancies it towards that B site, and I think that's a great place to put it. You can have an orb blocking it down, you can have just two players there and three towards A. And as we're going for some long control now, the flashes will come in and device. Presumably we'll be challenging Fallen, who's actually occupying the bar from position right now. Still waiting for that opportunity of anyone to go long devices there, getting ever closer. WP nails the shot! <laughs> I don't even know if he was it. I'd have to see that from his perspective. I don't know if that was a flick because he was looking toward Flower Pot or not, but it looks like Fallen almost walks out. Exactly what Cold does as Zipix sprays down too. All the kills going Astralis' way. And this is after only one gun round going into the hands of SK. So they can pull this back, but Bomb drop down for Fur. He's still in a very tight position because he can be pushed from the backside of bathrooms as well. So he needs to still fight forward. That's exactly that. Smart nade. Oh, it's almost out though, and I'm not sure I agree with the jump. In that case, Device just waiting with the AWP. Fox is almost caught with his knife out. One versus four, Astralis collect. Well then, Device, what an incredible shot that was. I'm sure we'll see it from his POV momentarily, but that looked astonishing. It was uh, an absolute mind-blowing experience. And he's a very, very good orb. And this is the reaction from the CTs. They're trying to push the monster tunnel there, but Zipex holding the flanks, holding his nerve as well. Gets on the 16 HP, he picks up both frags at that point. And here's a Device taking down the jumping 
approach from Bo. I have to agree. Like, at that point, he has to make something happen, right? He wants to give that surprise factor. Jumping out will not necessarily be the best. Porter Corby is trying to bait out the shot, and hopefully Device misses it. That's what he's going for there. So Aniko here for SK Gaming. You can see Glaive. He picks up the MP7, a very mobile and efficient weapon against unarmored players, so that's absolutely perfect for him. And farm some extra cash as well for a little bit more aggressive towards me. He's actually got four players around him as well, so can be Kind of his work cut out for him. He's actually alone towards middle as he goes around the corner. Okay, not a problem, it seems. <laughs> That's quite a shot. <laughs> Bye for. Thanks for playing today. Better luck next time. Still going to push on the QB as well after all of that. Uh, around the corner, they actually do manage to pick him up. It's Fox with the to be. CZ and exactly that. Device grabs bomb, gets away. He's low on HP. He's got to be so careful. Fallen's already behind him. He's going to the right though. He's trying to bait the back around, and thankfully Zipix come to his ale because he's going to spot him out. And Taco goes the other way to be instead. Fox has picked up an AK. That might be worth just holding on to. I think that's the plan at this point in time. I know it seems a long time to wait with a minute left in the round and Bomb not even close to B just yet. Yeah, well, still go towards B here. you got three players on low HP, but like you said, save that AK. It's probably going to be the best approach at this point. You're not going to win this round. So Taco, see what he can do here against the low HP players. Smoked out for now, though. The Bomb will be planted. That's going to be round over at this point. Fox probably going to be hiding in the bar from Jesse is and uh, just holding on to that weapon and trying to boost the economy going forward. Device playing with fire a little bit. You're very low HP. P, and he's going to go for the shot regardless. Oh. Surely going to be punished for it, but does take down Taco. Nice work from him. And just Fox remaining, like we said, saving the weapon going forward. The money is going to sit on around the, uh, just over, well, just under the 3k mark average. And they're going to have second save loss bonus. So they can get a buyout. It won't be the best. A couple of players might be on Famuses here. With Fox saving the AK, that certainly helps things out. He can drop a weapon over. So maybe just one Famus here. And he will be saving. You see no one on the minimap anywhere near him. He's, yeah, he's, he was sitting in that bathroom just from the minute mark. Could have put some attention into trying to chase him down by delaying the bomb plant, perhaps, but no need. Take wins where you can get them. 5-1 now for Astralis. Another fast early lead, and SK struggling again on their CT side. We mentioned they've got to keep guns up. They went to the double op. One round didn't work. Fallen goes single this time. It's all they can afford. Actually, I take that back. Cold could have grabbed one. They go for full utility on him instead. Well, do you get the ADVP out here? But yeah, glass cannon for Fallen. These sort of rounds, when you are slightly limited, you want to maybe take him, take a good spot out there. So Fallen has gone towards B, yeah, he can maybe get boosted up towards the B platform there, or maybe push towards Monster Tunnel. We'll see what he decides to do. Look at that boost, I think. Four members on B. He is yeah. indeed. Fox is going to put him up. Fur is the only one soloing A with this. So that was one of the questions we had. If they were going to play the single and they were going to be dynamic with that AWP, who would swap to A? Well, seemingly no one. Yeah, there's a bit of a gamble here trying to get that initial pick with the AWP. It's a nice little adjustment from them. Something we haven't seen as of yet. Just this one player towards the A side. You're absolutely right, it's going to be fair, but he's going very passively, just looking for a little bit of information, fall back, and a lot of rotations coming from his teammates. That will be the one to rotate. They're committing to that boost. It's fairly common, even if you go toward the A site, that eventually someone's going to make their presence inside that construction position. He's hoping he can just find the one pick. Predominantly putting his attention onto that short pipe rather than the doorway. But they'll give up on it now because Fallen's realized 55 seconds. They've not shown anything. Chances are the bulk of the players over toward A. He's going to try and get there. Not playing Park Sign as he often does. He's going to try and get to fourth front bathroom. Glaive and Kirby are already around Flower Pot as well with the boost at Park Sign. Cold's going to watch this. We saw a clever tactic from Dignitas yesterday where they played a third man strategy with Volda on the left so that they popped out and played off long. But not going to be doing that this time around. Zipix picks up one over toward B. Again, they do pass through that position, but late. It's pulled Fallen back, though, because they find that big pick. Boost! Down they go! Glaive walks in. <laughs> I'll take out the stilts below your feet, and as you fall, I'll find you two for It's going to be both of them down and out. Bomb planted immediately, and bathrooms covered off. CBWP. Ooh, if that, because he gets taken a shot through the fence, and then Kirby's already wrapped down the stairs behind, and that's gone. Textbook ground from Mr. Alasad. Zipex opening things up towards the B side. I think it was Taco. He's a little bit aggressive towards Shaw. He gets picked off. And then very quietly, they make their way towards A. Up towards Long. Undetected for so long. Caldera has to nail that first shot to even stand a chance of making that situation possible for them. But it's Glaive. He finds one. And the second player is boosted at that point. He has no chance of recovering. He goes down as well. And that should be the money in the bin at this point. Fox saving the AK once more. He is on five for four right now. But yes, the, the hounds are coming. It seems as he'll be hiding to see the entrance. Gets one, but it's going to be going down momentarily. There it is. Burns to a crisp. And the hands of Kiabi and four players survive for Astralis. And in a fantastic position right now. Another Rico for SK and 6 1 on the T side. This is their pick as well. We know overpass can be weak for SK, so not looking too good right now. This is that uh, one I'm talking about. As soon as Glaive gets his first pick here, Coldera maybe gets to drop it in there, but it's a nice wide pick from Glaive. Takes them both down. And Kiabi finds the upper as well. What a hell of a shot that was. Yeah, all things considered, I mean, only had 12 HP, but yeah, it wasn't a lovely shot. 
Well, the pistols. Yep. Six one, looking seven one. Yeah, this should be a seven one. A nice little contact play towards B, maybe. Some presence from Blade towards middle, and as yeah, contact in straight away. Take the jewels at this point. Nail the first kills. One barrels as well. Might get one kill there. Gets a headshot towards the device. Just wait for his teammates to help him out. Maybe overcommits a little bit there. I have to say, could have just let Dupree deal with that. But he takes a lot of damage as well, to be fair. Still going to be a, a round win, presumably, for Astralis. But Fallen getting an interesting position. Coming up with the flank from T-Spawn here. Two players on the flank and flat. In fact, he's got Fur with him. Smoke out from Dupree is smartly placed, therefore, because they can't push it through Monster and get vision. Again, remember, he's low. Good pick from Zipix as they cross over the other pipe. I'll wait as well for the further... It's on the map. Fox trying to wait for inside a squeaky. Any kill they get, any gun they grab, beneficial at this point in time. We're sitting with the exit. Bomb's been planted for a while, and safe escape is back through the CT stairs. Do Astralis fancy it? Looks like they do. They're gonna head that direction right now. No kits. Can't leave 100% yet, but most teams, I think, ever since the Snacks Ninja defuse sure. against FaZe, I think it was at the time, or G2 at the time. Yes, that's right on Mirage. Yeah. yeah. I think ever since then, teams have stopped. Uh, yeah, he ruined, uh, he ruined the Ninja Diffuse. Yeah. Yeah. It was such a, such a dumb one that every other team said, all right, that's not happening to us. We that's had another sick one in Inferno as well. I it was, was Kirby when he was on Dignitas right, at the Major. Yeah. Stayed inside of what is now the chapel, I guess people are calling it, but construction. Yeah. They all left down Banana. He kills MBK, the only guy near the bomb, that's and diffused. Right. Yeah, that was awesome. Well then. We'll have a look at the loss bonus at this point. I think there's a fourth stage of the CTs. You finally get some money to buy once again. Not the best. You can see only one kit here, and it's going to be Fox with just an M4 and no utility whatsoever. But Fallen has got that orb. Having a rough game, though, so far. I think Fallen only has one frag. It's one for seven. A player you expect to be carrying SK when he has the AWP in hand. Can't really get rolling just yet. Device certainly got the upper hand at the moment. Round number nine. Full default for Astralis, waiting for any aggression towards middle. That is a signature of Fallen, pushing for that smoke, trying to get those first picks, but he looks a bit caged right now. Doesn't seem to have the same sort of flurry he normally has. Cole jumps across Monster with a nade down. So similar, actually, that usage of the nade is similar to what they try and do on Dust2 with the mid doors, where they let the particles of the nade distract and obscure the vision long enough so the AWP player can't get the shot down mid. Interesting you see it used over Monster. As Cole jumps straight across and gets position left side. Nice will start to take the AWP up toward the party as well, but thinks otherwise, wants to look at the board. He knows Fallen wants to play out that position, and he's there again. He's boosted up. I'm surprised more teams don't try and go for that corner boost that Guardian happily showed everyone to take him down, but no one's there. Come back away. Oh, this is going to be Zipex showing presence towards B once again. He now goes towards short and is trying to find that first pick. It's almost identical to that previous gun run we had before. Got some long control. He pushes CDs back. They're not really actually facing that position as well. And you can see whether Zipex can find anything towards B before they make their final move. Still just firing on some bullets here, speculatively. That's for He repositions in front of the smoke. Back to by Fallen as well in the bathroom. Just trying to find this next kill. Fallen. Oh. Can't quite get it. Shoulder baits it out, but Fur's gonna have to play this well because he's got smoke dissolving in front of him. Does find the first shot on Zipix, but that's gonna leave him susceptible to two other players rounding the corner, and he's bought himself some time and space. They're getting a little bit confused and tripping over each other, but they find the kills. Device Dupree, Glaive, all with one on the way through. That forces the rotations. Yeah, it wasn't the prettiest CS there, but they got the job done. No one really wanted to commit and then take the challenge with Fallen, but they finally get him in the end. Two players remaining now, no kits for the CT, but they have to rely on firepower alone. And Taco strikes first, takes down Glaive, three on two. Away, though, yep. They it's don't there. fancy it. They don't have kits. Yeah. And there's still three players with such good post plan. They've got to get out. Yeah. Well, they get maximum loss bonus next round. They're saving two M4s. At least they'll be looking to the future at this point. Garby, though, looking to lock them in towards his B size. He'll be watching towards Shaw for now. Goldzera and Taco. Taco with low HP as well. This point is still very important. Should be the CD surviving at this stage. But Device, he's still on the hunt, it seems. Hello? Got rid of that gun. Did he, divide, did he die for the bomb device I there? think he did. Yeah. Inside the window room, you're still actually vulnerable to the blast radius because it goes through the floor, so... Well, the Stralis do have money for days. It's not really a huge problem. Um, but uh, SK Gaming do save two weapons out. Like we said, maximum loss bonus. So $3,400, it's not really ideal on a CT side. They only get 34 but save two M4s. You can maybe drop a couple of families to there, balance the books a little bit in that sense. But 8-1 on the T side of overpass. Looking very, very promising indeed for us. Right? Haven't really broken a sweat just yet. Famous, AK, three M4s. They have got a couple of kits and some utility to work with here. It's only not ideal, but it's enough to work with here. Fallen, to be fair, hasn't had much effect of the orb. Great nade going towards short. Does a ton of damage towards Dupree, 60 to be exact. Yeah, that's max damage considering he's got armor. 
Not quite the 100 HG nade that we saw yesterday. No, that was pretty sick. Yeah. But I think we'll see that for a while. No, I think that's the only time I've ever seen it while casting. I know it exists, but it's extremely rare. Dupree's going to get boosted as well. Taco's playing in his typical position, so up he goes. Chance to spot it. He's forward of the barrels at this point in time. Thankfully for his sake, because otherwise he sits in the open for that headshot from the AK. Taco's going to flash the back off this. They'll drop down there. Should do so immediately after. Or just crouch, I guess, for now. So they're still going to commit to that pick. Fallen pushed very far up at long A right now. Has a chance to try and wrap around him behind them. He's on the rifle, so flank is promising. They're going back that direction, though. The question is what Fox does in all this, because again, he's playing the swing position. So he's brought the FAMAS back down toward B side, at least for now. Might be the right call. We'll see. Right side, his right side, left of the entrance where Cold's playing. I mean, it's Taco's got to play in between the wood, and he's got to guess right in between the bags. That one's Cold back as he goes down. Gabri gets there in time, but only for one. Okay, we will find the response. Wow. Fox limited on the jungle. Smokes <laughs> out, and a great <laughs> shot from Device. Follows it up. Oh, Fox wow. down Astralis. Keep adding them up because SK has got no response. Absolutely not. That's going to have at this point. Device is in incredible form right now. He does make it to the grand final. He is going to be a tough one to contain. Here's the B execution coming in there. Colts are doing what he can on that B side. He only finds one. Instant reply, Kiabi. What a hell of a shot that was. And Device, very confident, seems in his zone right now, looking comfortable and managing to finish the round off. We do have the force fight. This is the desperate situation. This is the CTs oh, now. Needs to start posting rounds. You got Famuses, UMPs, two M4s. That may seem like an insignificant move, which Device just pulled because he's not going to take advantage of it. He may still. Getting that little run boost off your teammate because by chance he landed on his head, but he's actually on the op, so he could have beat. If Fallen was going park, he actually could have beat him there because of that. Well, there we go. Aggressive towards long. Getting caught out. I thought Fox actually gets to drop on them there, so at least it's terrorists know where they are, and they're going to have to reply straight away here. First frag comes in, and uh, fighting back with two lovely kills. That's going to be Fallen's fine the second, but still, actually got the man advantage for now. Four on two. Oh. Fallen did better than I thought he would there because they were both caught behind one rock, one tiny hiding place for two heads, and he manages to get that second kill. As you say, thankfully Fur found one beforehand because it still gives him the man advantage when he inevitably is going to go down. Glaive, good wow. read though, finds Taco pushing very far up considering they're up a man. It's actually a nice read from Taco's getting a lot of information. I don't think most teams would actually be expecting that, but Glaive, he's got his number now goes down to a 2 on 2. This was the 4 on 2 until Device got involved. And now they've got a ton of time, a minute to play with, and now they have a huge advantage. Overfire's a very difficult map to hold his positions by yourself as well. Fur in that one and done position, that would be good enough at the moment to be fair. We'll see whether Device can find any bits of information. We'll have a look at the B side as well. It's going to be Cold Zera. I think he's pushed up towards Shaw right now. Just watching the connector door. Yeah, exactly that. Just watching the players enter the walk-up connector and hopefully into his crosshair. Hopefully so. Forward enough for the bomb site to call for rotation, but very far away. It's oh, for it long. And they are heading Cold's direction. He's got to have that perfectly lined up for getting closer to him behind him. They go very quickly. Don't expect this position. Good trade back from Device, therefore. As he gets Glaive down, this will put a bomb plant in for half health. Is going to rotate back around the same direction that they came from. But can Device get the read on this? Fur does not have a kit. Yeah, no kit. He has got a couple of flashbangs and low HP as well. It's not looking great. That's to uh, operate quite quickly here now. Oh, perfect position for Device, my god. Yeah, perfect in pretty much every situation. No matter where he comes in, he gets a jump on him. If he walks in from the window above, if he comes around the corner from stairs, comes oh. a monster, and he's got it lined up. But first one, the timing, there it is, though. Exactly that. Device still has headshot angle. And another round for Astralis, 10 to 1. Beautiful stuff there from Device. He's so aware as to what the possibilities are, where the risk could be coming from. He reads it like an absolute book there. Watches him coming from short. Even though he doesn't see him cross over, he knows there's the possibility. Nails the shot as well. 10-1. And that was a force by from SK. It looks like it has to be an eco at this point. And such a horrible time to put it in as well. So we fall on a scout. Some CZs, 5-7s. We haven't seen much aggression from the CTs at all. They're always lacking the money. And Fallen's having a little bit of a shock here. 2 for 10. One of the maps he's known to be very, very good on indeed. It's being shut down by Device. 14-3 and three for him. A hell of a game. Very impressive device so far. He's in impeccable form. Fallen's doing what he can. Last time they had the scout, we saw it on the last map on Cash. He actually made it around quite interesting, but far removed from the activity so far. And it's over toward Monster Tunnel. The first exchange goes through. Zipix actually comes out 44 HP, but finds a kill onto Taco, and Cold's on 10. Going funneled back in that direction. There it is. Fallen gets down by the off. Dupree finds two and lower. Cold last alive. 10 HP, tries to get to the gun, Kirby hot on his heels, 11-1. A lot of rounds in a row now for Astralis. Obviously, maximum loss burn is still, but uh, a full buy coming in, maybe a double orb setup is required at this stage. Desperation normally calls for it, and we'll see whether they bring it to the table. We talk about the inconsistency this year. 
think nine different teams, I can't even keep track, have won premier level events this season not in 2016. Yet, Astral, well, that's just it. Not Astralis. And the only team, FaZe had a chance at being in the same position, but the only team left out of the three, including SK obviously still, that haven't won one this year. So we could get yet another winner. That would put 10 different winners they, in 2016. They do meet Optic, Optic which is the good rematch. Yeah, yeah, definitely a good rematch. And it's looking very like it right now. Obviously getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, but from what we're seeing right now, this is a very one-sided affair. We have got a full buy from SK. They get 11-4, right? This game's still on. There's still a chance, but that's if they get the rest of these rounds. It's a good time to take a pause right now. Obviously tactical for SK Gaming. We'll have a look at their buy quickly. They've got a AWP and Fallen, of course. Four and fours. They have got kits. It's a full buy with smokes. Only one incendiary. It can be a little bit of an issue to hold off those final executions from the terrorists there. But the unpaws comes in. Time to step up here. Be very, very flat indeed. I haven't really got going at all. We haven't really seen that aggression, that flare the Brazilians are known for, and actually getting in the faces of the terrorists here. Is waiting for Astralis and losing every encounter it seems. Be rush maybe. Yep, I'd say so. The Molotovs try and hold off short, push them back if anyone trying to get aggressive. Water begins to funnel themselves in toward Monster, and that's where Taco. Not only is he burned what alive, he takes down Dupree, drops bomb. Finally, Astralis shut off early because SK has got to jump on them. They're going to rotate over. Taco's playing in the same position. They're lined up. Kierby gets it. He gets predictable in there. He needs to move away. They already know he's playing the position at Barrels. He's gotten two kills. He's got to move. But this could catch them off because Cold goes the same position. They're not expecting it twice. He finds one right away. Bomb still dropped inside. And Molotov himself. Out of that position, I say Glaive. I say himself. Glaive Molotov's him out, but Zipix is still locked off in smoke. He's got it all to do, Glaive, because his teammate's not with him inside the site, therefore. Great the bomb again. Good pick up. This is pulled it back for down Fox to respond. It's all on a Zipix. One versus two. He's not the one with the bomb, so they have to go around to try and grab it. Zipix will do so. They're ready and waiting. Four HP. I think SK, Henry, I think they found round two. Just about, yep. It was a four on two, but it got a little bit tense there. But that resets really the loss by for SK. So after the pause, Astralis now, okay, they're going to start adjusting towards him. I'll go aggressive towards middle. I'm trying to find that first pick. Let's go for a B rush. I actually like that a lot, to be fair. But they ran into a lot of utility from SK. You can feel it coming. The flash comes comes over. The Molotov went towards the side as well. And they actually dropped a Molotov in towards Montesano. A nade as well. Did a ton of damage. Another Orc nade here at ECS Finals. And uh, it was well held off there by SK. And now he's got something to work with there. Unfortunately, after going down to a two-on-two -two in the end, or two-on-one, I should say, they're managing to get himself in reset potential there. And Fallen can't seem to get rolling here at all. Another shot he'd be quite comfortable hitting normally. Can't find the kill there to kick things off. He does put a couple of players across into the playground, though. Dipex, whoa, crosshair placement was dead on. Old evades death as he gets back down on the ground. I think he'll stay there, stay grounded for a minute because no need to jump that again. He'll stay inside of the site for meanwhile. He'll push up inside bathrooms. He may fall and A players have Fox supporting this time deep inside the site again, playing that swing rotation. And more and more teams are getting used to on this map. Device meanwhile finds Fox, which is behind Furs. So the fact that he's passive and Furs not could actually benefit him because they're not expecting him. Catches off Blade. Good response has fallen, finds Kirby as well, but it's traded back. Hold on, because Astralis still have this to a three versus three, which favors them, especially with 56 seconds left. Yeah, we have got Fallen, though. He's just managing to find his third kill of this map so far, but Taco, an audacious player here, could get caught up in T-Sport. It's going to come down to these timings. Device was ready for it as well, but can't nail the shot just yet. Taco takes him down to 34 HP. He won't be refacing that position just yet, but they know where Taco is at this point. He's a player on shore. That's Dupree. Seeing if the rotation comes in, if he can find the next kill here. Waiting by those sandbags. Pick up from Taco as he shuffles out to find Zip. Clear monster, good. It better pick as he finds Dupree as well. Better late than never. SK is starting to find their individual form as he shuts them down on the way through. Oddly enough, round 14, he leads the way in nine frags now for his team. Device, meanwhile, the one left in the one versus three. That's 16. 17. Nice wide peak. Fallen, no chance. Nearly gets the lineup on Taco, but low HP goes down. Lovely work from Device there. You thought for a second he had a chance there with that first shot, but. It's going to be SK Gaming getting two in a row now. It's going to be the last round, of course. Still a ton of money available for the Danes. Taco, this is what we've come to expect from the Brazilians. Finally starting to show up here. Good kills there towards Monster and Short. The Vise, this was the shot that was quite impressive, was it not? Nice little nice kick there. Taco responding, though, so there's escape with three. 11 4. I'll give them a chance with Pistol and perfect economy management in the next half, but I'm still giving it a long shot. 11 fours possible, 12 three, not so much. So if they get this last round, no business. Just need the pistol after that. But this is what we wanted to see. They weren't doing this before. Doing the plays that we've come to know and love 
of SK getting the next with confidence. This is why. Device doesn't expect that coming. Two kills a third. This is better now. Much better. We saw Cool get taken down on that earlier in the weekend, but first made up for it. Pulls back away. He's on 48 HP, and they get out for free as well. This is actually a very, very good start to the round. Minute 20 still to work with for them. They can get a little more passive inside of the sights. Kirby, knowing so, will try and take advantage of that by getting up toward long, and they are going to continue on to this A aggression. Interestingly enough, Fox, again, playing this swing, is down in the window, which does basically give him the fastest rotation on the other side. Obviously, you can see into the B site. But that's anticipating the fact that two kills at long is going to shuffle them away. Better pick from Fur. Well, after this pause, three rounds in a row, Matt, so not too shabby at all. That's if everything goes to plan at this stage, of course. It's going to be a five on two. Heavily favored for SK, and it looks like Fallen should be picking up another pick here as well. He's actually got a decent crosshair placement. There it is. Legs up. Dupree can't find a kill just yet, but he gets the information. That should be the rotations called at this point. Flashes start to come in. He's trying to lock them out as long as possible. Behind truck gets taken down. The one that has all the kills so far. Good response to Stroll. Six out both, but as we said, the rotations were coming in. Fox and Fur. There it is. He's the one. Doing? So it was Fox instead that actually went down, but Fur gets caught off. You're dead, right? No need to go that aggressive. Zipix now is a one versus two. This is this is ludicrous. The bad they've even given an opportunity. Five on two at one point. And as a result, Taco's already left to go to B because he knows Zipix was heading that direction. Has to read it. Problem is that's two one on ones of Zipix. Oh, this is gone. Pulls out the bomb. Yeah. Good position from Cold. You're gonna catch him. So 11-4. They do get to the score line we said was the only possible scenario left for them. A wow. long task. They did win second half pistol in the first game when they were behind. Yeah, well, a good recovery to be fair. Going that far down, I think it was 10 one on one points and they're managing to bring that to 11 4. All things considered, that's okay. I'll take it. And we'll see what happens here. If they can win the pistol, we might be onto something here. It's round number one of the second half here. 11 4 in favor of the Danes, looking incredibly strong, especially Device as well. 17 kills for him after the first half. Fallen, as we said, his, uh, his nemesis, the counter Orpa. We'll be on three for 13, so he's not really showing up as of yet, but found an influential kill in the previous round. We'll see what happens here when we go into the pistol. The buy comes in, two smokes, three sets of armor, Superman buy for tackle as well, Tech 9 and armor, and the buy is looking for that initial headshot. Can't land it just yet, but Dupree, he's getting lively towards the monster tunnel, looking for a headshot on Taco here. Shot deep and falls away. Rotate over towards Sandbags instead. Taco's going to wait for that Tech 9 from far. He's the Superman play again. Fallen as always, team player. Be the team utility. And slowly but surely they are going back over toward the A side as well. Smokes more. I guess if you've only got one. Yeah, if you get through Monster Tunnel safely, you can put it out on top of the site, plant inside it. But with A, you can lock off a lot more potential positions where pistols are going to be burrowed. Three over to B as well for Astralis. Hold zero. We'll just watch to make sure they don't pop out. It's Dupree. It's going to be occupied. Should give the confidence to SK to get a little more forward. Fox just double checks to make sure stairs are clear before they turn their backs to it and start looking toward the A site. Fern Fallen again, always in tandem working to try and push back Device. Wait for the smoke because Fallen's got it out in that position. I highly anticipate it's going to land almost where Device is now. Yeah, this will be an execution. You can see the long control. Three players towards short as well. Smoke's in the bomb site here and Device is trying to take them down with the back. Comes in. What a great way to kick things off there. Take down Fur. Massive shot. Smoke didn't come in just yet. Fallen's only thrown it now, so they actually put it back stairs, which means they still have a chance if Device wants to pop back out, but there's a smoke in front of him as well. He's got to try and walk back through and bomb. Just getting in position. Device wins a second. That boost up is working as well because Fox is occupied. They can slip in behind. He's got good position, mind you. If he can stay here undetected, they're going to have to pass him at some point in time, even with the man advantage firmly in their favor. Fox, he's the wild card in all of this. Zipix, meanwhile, trying to get on the flank. He's going to spot out Fallen, not ready for this at all. Turns around, Great. manages to somehow win the duel. Far range as well with the clock, and now Fox, prime position, said he would be there. Has to try and follow this up and watch to his left. It's a crossfire. It's a blunder. Both go to the knife. Gold's going to win it off, and then there is a knife because Device comes back around. Oh, my oh! God. Device with two in one round. That's insane. And he's going to get the defuse on the back of it as well. That is absolute pandemonium. Replaying device right now. What the hell just happened there? Device opened things up with two kills. The pistol, the knife's two of them. What is going on? A, such a huge pistol round as well. Like you said, Fox is in the prime position to lock it down. It looked like it was going very successfully. Let's find out what happened. He pulls out the knife, runs out of ammo. Okay, oh buddy, hop God. in. There's one. Keep going. Why not? Boom. Oh my God! He was—it wasn't even that he switched to it for a call. He was out of ammo the whole time. <laughs> How much money's this guy got now? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, so he gets uh, the M4, all the nades required as well, and the defuse kit. It's a bit of a blunder for SK. Two knife kills. Very, very rare indeed. And Fox gets caught in the reload. That's so frustrating. And look at this flash in. Perfect timing. Zipix with three. 
Fur gets the response, but it may not matter. Astralis is just running with this now as Dupree clutches out. Taco, class player, pinched off already. It's Fur down to 22. Okay, then. <laughs> Close line, pre-fire, doesn't matter. 13 rounds, Astralis. Right. Let's calm down, everyone. It's all fine. They get the AKs out on the third. Round number 18, Astralis. What a crazy, crazy pistol that was. Not so much a report in the second round. No force back coming from SK in the second. They will be buying on this one, though. So they get the AKs out, and it will be fired across the board. They have some utility to work with as well. Normally, when we've seen them on this map before, especially at this tournament, it's been focused towards the B-bomb site, trying to get those executions rolling. Looks like they may be heading there once again. Three players actually can make it four heading to that side of the map. They've got the smokes to work with here. So they won't just be rushing in. They'll be slowing things down, waiting for any sort of aggression in the CTs. And Zipex. Oh, gets away with his life just about there. Gets headshot through the wall instead of a, a straight-up headshot. So he is on a 47 HP instead. I'm still baffled. Who gets an ace with two knives in it? It's Fur. I'll sit back and wait to throw excuse for three extra times. And perfectly, they take it right away. Flashback in. That's twice they've gone aggressive to catch off SK. Getting caught a little bit off guard. Not something we commonly see from the Brazilian side. It just speaks testament to their current state right now. And they're down to just three of these AKs remaining. Cole's going to wait to try and watch back in case anyone walks out from Squeaky, but Fox is now there as well. Glaive continues to try and spray through said smoking monster. They'll back away together. Zipix stays inside of the site. Cole's got to go hunting. Molotov will distill in behind the barrels, not surprisingly, and Fallen. Taking advantage of that motion. Deep that he's going to try to clip in. Give it away, though. Zipix carelessly walks out. Cold off his more ammo. Definitely a kill for him there, but either way, it didn't matter. Kirby hot on his heels. 14-4. Astralis all but done because money gone on the SK side. Dupree, what a fantastic player this was from Shaw. Perfect flashbang. That's the synergy we're talking about with these top teams. He gets flashing by the team after they took the headshot at the start of the run as well. Zipex got the wall bang there, Matt. That's actually kind of nuts considering the situation as well. Lovely work by him. 14-4, and you have to force into these rounds. Unfortunately, oh no, actually maybe not. They're going to take two players all in, which is interesting. So. Three of them not forcing in, and Calder and Taka do. Surely you want to keep your money. It's either one or the other, right? In these scenarios, you're going to have two players extremely limited next rounds. Presumably, you're not going to win this one. Okay, then. We'll see where they can get the bomb down here and balance things out. But they're going to take a shot from the AWP to kick things off, and the nade, the alley oop to finish it off. And KRB can find the second kill as well. This is looking very, very bleak for SK. They're going to go in with two players on pistols next round. It will be at uh, fourth stage loss bonus, but probably enough. Ooh. Okay then, Cold Zera. That works. At least for now. That works better, though. Device up close to take some back with the AWP. 15 to 4. We've got a rematch of the E League finals potentially on our hands. Only a week later, as well, in Astralis. They beat them early on in this tournament as well. The first game of the group, they actually were successful in that. That endeavor, so this is a very optimistic and promising final for them. It's a tantalizing prospect for everyone here as well, and definitely everyone tuning in online. Device will stick with the AWP, no surprise. Guns will be bought in whatever form they can for SK. They've got a Deagle on Taco and a UMP. I find it weird they actually invested two players into that last one. You can see now they've got a Deagle on Taco. Cold Zero just the UMP. Sure, players that can use that weapon, but if you want to have AK, sure. Booster Chance actually winning this round going forward. As we go into potentially the last round of this series here. Second map hasn't really lived up to expectations here, but we'll see whether SK Gaming can hold on. They open the hands of Device once more. He's towards Long for now, and the smoke comes in towards Bathroom. Pretty much a default for now. SK again trying to get some mid control at this point. They've got one player in the form of Kiabi towards the bathroom, just backing up the device slightly and allowing them to have some mid control for now as Glaive rotates it back in towards A. Dupree. Oh, Taco just with Deagle as well. This is perfect if Dupree can find him. Backs away smartly though on it. Doesn't want to get caught off entirely because it is a gun down. There's no one there to support a trade. Even though Kiabi back and jumping in, they're able to catch him off. Dupree does win that duel against Taco. The UMP kill now gives. An M4 to Cold Zero. He'll upgrade immediately. And they continue to put pressure onto Long A to try and push back device. Smoke down the corridor. Sit just a little bit longer. Not going for that park sign boost to try and get him above and see the elevation of it. Meanwhile, they'll group, coagulate inside of the bathrooms and try and take a different approach, a faster approach, a device, or rather, excuse me, Dupree spraying into that. He's lighting him up again with the flash Great damage. Blaze caught off in the open, has to watch for that because Cole still has his chance to secondary peak that position down. Three versus three, shot in from the vice misses. But he's got to be careful because he misses a second. They're getting ever closer. Cold might be low, but he's got the lineup and device. He might have to go to a knife again if he keeps running out of ammo. Guys find the shot on Defer. Dupree pacing as well is going to wrap it up. And Astralis are back in a final and back up against Optic. 
super strong performance there, especially from Device. What a game they've just had, sending out a message to Optic. They're coming for that grand final, and they're looking to win here. An incredible form. We weren't sure they would continue it from the group stages, but that is very clear indeed. Amazing performance overall. 16-4 to close out the series. Well played, as well as extremely well played. And again, the problems persisted on the CT side for SK. Obviously, like you said, sure. after the timeout, they were able to...